This is a video about tanks. And tanks are important for people who tank, but it's also important for everybody else who doesn't tank because you gotta know what you're getting into when you invite a tank to your group. Is it an S tier tank? Now, of course, a good tank's gonna be a good tank no matter what they play. But here they are. Ranking of tanks by Dorky for the War Within Beta. Highest keys and pugs. He's ranking their DPS and everything else. Let's see what Dorky has to say, my friendly alt, about who the best tank is in the War Within. Here is the long-awaited video. Oh God, the I've been dancing playing a ton of it over the last two months, and here it is. <laughs> the official ranking video for all six tanks in the Warfin, for M+, specifically. I'll be ranking every tank in the following categories. Damage, survivability, okay. right. self-sustain, utility, difficulty, and fun. I'll be scoring each of these categories okay. from the scale of 1 to 5, with 5 being the best of the category. At the end of the video, I'll also be doing an overall ranking for each tank. Oh nice, sounds like a good video. Starting off with damage, we'll primarily be looking at how much damage each tank does in a realistic M plus scenario. This definitely does Blood not DK's factor in rank. the highest possible damage builds or specific hero talents, since some of them are not as suitable for surviving. Priority damage or single target damage will also be weighed higher than AoE or overall damage. Okay. Guardian Druid. The loons chosen and Moonfire damage has seen heavy nerfs over the whole beta cycle. Ooh. Air tank still does extremely high AoE damage, especially during Incarnation, your biggest cooldown. With the loons chosen, AoE damage is high, but priority damage and single target is very lackluster. Okay. Druid of the Claw, on the other hand, provides a ton more single target damage, but it hasn't been my preferred choice with how clunky it plays and how much less tanky it can be True, at times. It's been Mark of the Wild is also massive for group damage. I'm giving Bear a 3 out of 5 plus 0.5 for Mark of the Wild. Blood okay. Death Knight. Ooh, yeah, Death Let's Knights have seen a lot of nerfs to their damage over the whole beta cycle. Oh, shit. DKs do great sustained overall damage, and I'll primarily be looking at Deathbringer, since it is currently the stronger tree overall. The damage is consistent okay. with small burst windows during Reaper's Mark. Should really? It. Death? Oh, Deathbringer is probably the best for damage, but I, I think for healing, isn't it San Leon? Uh, I'll have to see, but well, yeah, I guess we'll talk about it. Ability, and the class just does decent AoE, decent single target. I'll be giving DK a 3.4 out of 5. Yeah, that's a good. Protection Warrior. Mm, and this is the last cheeks. massive damage buff to Warrior. It's been doing amazing. Warrior always has high damage with how often Avatar is up. Avatar is a damage cooldown and it can have up to 65% uptime throughout a dungeon. AoE is amongst the highest and single target is pretty solid. Execute is also extremely powerful and there are a lot of really big spell myself. effects you can do. I'm primarily looking at Mountain Fane since it's the overall stronger M plus talent. But Colossus does provide even more damage for M plus if you're looking for even more damage. I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 plus 0 0.5 for battle shout. Okay. Vengeance Theme Hunter. Vengeance burst damage is crazy high, particularly with the Fels Guard hero talent. Of course talent. it is. This hero talent has been buffed a lot over a beta cycle. And Blizzard loves demon hunters. They always, they always give demon hunters all the cool shit. Yeah, demon hunter's probably good. They nerfed In Burning damage. Blades, but they did buff Demon Surge, making it burst even harder. I'll primarily be looking at Felsguard since it's the preferred M plus hero talent tree. When pulling large around Metamorphosis, Vengeance actually has the biggest burst currently. Firebrand and Fell Devastation are short cooldowns, meaning you'll have mini damage windows for every single pull. I'm giving it okay. a 4.3 out of 5, plus 0 0.5 for Chaos Brand. Mm -hmm. Brewmaster Monk. Man, monks. Monk is very consistent. Dude, monks are... This is the age of the monk. I'm shocked. But every video we've watched, damage, healing, and now tanking. I mean, damn. Monks are just doing great. This is good for monks. With good for you guys. Cooldowns like Chi Burst, Exploding Keg, and Weapons of Order. With the Shadow Pan, Hero Talent Tree, there are some elements of RNG with what proc you can get. Since the Shadow Pan buffs, single target is extremely high on Monk, and AoE damage is pretty high up there. Because of how much more I value Prior Damage, I'm giving this the highest score Damn. of 4.4 out of 5. I'll only that give bucks. Mystic Touch a plus 0 0.3 because of how little physical damage there is nowadays. Protection Paladin. Okay. Paladin has seen some major stealth nerfs to Lightsmith, making the damage a lot lower than before. Right now, Paladin is in a weird position where you want to be taking Avenging Wrath Might for damage, but it's a choice node with Sentinel, a massive defensive cooldown for Paladins. With Sentinel, uh, Paladin see, damage so you gotta be willing to go more defensive or more damage uh, based on this. Is amongst the worst, and with Avenging mm -hmm. Wrath Might, it's at least bursty during cooldowns. Because I'm looking at it from a Sentinel POV. I'm guessing most Paladins will take the uh, the damage based one talent and then. The They'll just blame healers when they die. That's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. I'm giving Paladins a 2.5 out of 5. Oh, shit. I thought he was going in. Oh, I thought Paladins were... Oh, my God. 2.5. Damn. 
Oh, wow. Survivability. Okay. In this category, we'll be taking a look at how stable go. the tanks look overall. And how Technically, probably the most important. I mean, tanks doing damage is good and nice and all. It's a, it's a nice quality of life changer. But let's be honest. Survivability matters most for tanks. That's why we're there. Oh, it may fare in Gotta a survive. realistic group scenario. We'll be considering how they deal with bosses, trash, size of pulls, and varying types of damage like magic bleeds and high physical damage. Bear is extremely tanky during cooldowns and can handle large pulls the best. However, outside of cooldowns and for lower target pulls that will go on for a long time, bears can struggle a bit. Magic hits and big tank busters hurt bears real bad and is their biggest weakness. I'll be giving bears a 4.2 out oh, that's of 5. That's not bad. That's not bad. DKs are in the tankiest state they've been in a long time, Hell despite yeah. the death strike nerfs. DKs will probably continue to be unkillable when played well, <laughs> and there aren't yes. many scenarios compared to before yes. where DK yes. runs. This is why I played Blood DK. This is why I don't play Blood DK to pump fat numbers. I don't play Blood DK to, you know, make it look pretty and sexy. No, I play Blood DK for one reason, one reason only. I want to be an unkillable god. That's exactly why I play Blood DK. And I always call myself Samicus the Unkillable One. Yes, this is what I want. This is the fantasy that I need out of Blood DK. Thank you, Blizzard. Thank you for listening to Blood DKs and making us the unkillable gods that we are meant to be. ...into you, the infamous one-shot territory. With how the polls go in Warfin, you will rarely pull big enough to the point where you can get killed in the global. However, this weakness still stands, and there are some <laughs> extremely rare DKs, scenarios yeah, where you might pull big enough and DKs can't handle it. And because of how DKs can basically live forever, I'll still be giving DKs a 4 what? out of 5. He just hyped me up all this shit, and then he gave me the less than, a, than the druid? What the hell? I just got all excited. I thought he was going to give us like a 5 or something. Damn. Warriors are the brick wall. If you want a true brick shit. wall class, this is it. Warrior's biggest weakness is sustained magic damage, dots, and oh, bleeds. Sad. But in War in Season 1, there aren't many encounters where a warrior will struggle. Warrior has answer to almost every tank damage mechanic. With Damn, spell warriors flash, just sounding spell good. block, shield wall, and just being immune to most physical damage. They are unkillable in smaller poles and scale very well into larger poles. Overall, this is looking to be the most durable tank. Not quite as durable yeah. as bear for large poles, but generally really tankier i'm giving warrior a 4.4 4 out of Shit, 5 we're in third place about warriors i've always been jealous of for one reason and one reason only blood decays yes we survive we live long we do all the things we do but when we first get hit when we first go into a pole it takes a second for us to get through that opening rotation because we have such a damn complicated one it's uh it, we're not exactly you know the the strongest tank in that first off pull warriors are warriors go into a pull rock hard ready to go like they they never take a big hit to start blood decays you watch that health fly around in the beginning it's kind of scary i've always been jealous of warriors when it comes to that Demon Hunters are in a weird situation where they want to be using all their defensive cooldowns offensively. They are nowhere near as tanky as we've seen in Dragonflight and can definitely handle large pulls, but with cooldowns planned around them. Outside of cooldowns, Vengeance can be susceptible, so there will be moments of kiting or external help required. When played well, Demon Hunter should live fine. I'll be giving Vengeance Demon Hunter a 3 out of 5. Ooh. Monk can be deceptively tanky when their HP bars are yo-yoing a lot. With Ox Dance, Monk does extremely well against large tank busters and just big hits in general. But Monk doesn't scale very well into larger bowls and does require a lot of help. Monk honestly uh, feels like a lesser version of Blood Death Knight at times, with how quickly their health can go damn. up and down. I'm giving Monk a 3 out of 5. Okay. Okay. Paladins have been hurt big time by the tank nerfs and hasn't seen much help. Right now, Word of Glory healing is very low, and the defensives of Paladins are significantly worse than what they were back in early Dragonflight. This is definitely the weak- I mean, Jesus Christ, chat. People are going to see this shit on YouTube and think I suck at the game. Cut that shit out. I'm very good at this game, okay? My God. Show some love. Respect me. Tank you. defensively, but honestly, despite it being the weakest, I've found it still playable. I'm giving Paladins a 2.5 out of Ooh, 5. Ooh, it's a low one. That's a low one. Self sustain. The main difference in this category compared to survivability Can't is win. how reliant we Can't are on a group to stay alive. This can vary from right. needing heals, receiving external defensives, and getting help with kicks, stuns, or slows to avoid damage. Okay. The Loon's Chosen provides a good bit of sustain. The Talon's Lunar Beam and Loon's Favored provides decent passive healing. Frenzied Regen did get nerfed, but still provides just enough healing to not be reliant on the healer. Outside of cooldowns, Bear will require a bit of healing and help with stopping dangerous casts. I'm giving Bears a 3.7 out of 5. Okay. 
Not bad. DK is still the king of self-sufficiency. Despite the Death Strike nerfs, DK requires minimal healing. DKs do benefit a lot from external defensive cooldowns and buffs like Ancestral Vigor and Earth Shield from Hell yeah. It's not as good as older versions of Blood DK, especially with their lower effective ah, HP due to the Blood Shield nerfs. But I'm giving DKs a 4.8 oh, out of 5. That's pretty damn. Is that the highest we've seen so far of anything? 4.8. It's not bad. Even though warriors Same. can't really heal themselves well, warriors will take practically no damage for most part of the dungeon. As long as there is some passive healing here and there, I've found warrior to be some of the least required overall healing. Warrior also handles most magic encounters really well in season 1, and they do have a good amount of stops themselves. Star okay. Reflect is also very powerful for a lot of these big magic hits. I'm giving warrior a 4 out of 5. Out of 4.8. Demon Hunters suffered quite a bit from the tank nerfs. With the Soul Crush build, it's not bad, but with the Last Resort Cheat build, Soul Healing by itself is a bit low. On larger pulls, Demon Hunter is still largely self-sufficient, but it's on lower target counts or on bosses where it's much worse. Overall, I've found DH to require more healing than before. I'm giving Damn. DH a... Demon Hunter across the board has been like, you know, sub, sub middle. It's just mid. Oh shit, that's a surprise. 3.3 out of 5. Always been Blizzard's love child, it feels like. Monk needs a good bit of healing to get going, especially when Stagger gets consistently high. Even though Monk requires a lot of healing, it also soaks up a ton of healing really well, which ends up inflating the number of healing received. Monks can also quickly run out defenses against very frequently high damage. Monk also just benefits the most from Augmentation Evoker, so there is somewhat of a reliance on the Augmentation Evoker. I'll be giving Monk a 2.8 out of 5. Ooh, ooh. Paladins got the short end of the stick with the tank nerfs and increased HP scaling. The biggest complaint we've heard all beta cycle was how little Word of Glory heals. Paladins also run out of cooldowns Damn. much quicker. Definitely so the I mean, like a... emotional damage. Yeah, it's fucking every time I look at chat, that's what I get. Uh, it, it sounds like paladins are going to need to be fixed in some way when it comes to tanking. I mean, they're fine in DPS and holy, it looks like, ret and holy, but man, they've been like bottom of all these rankings almost every single category. Shit least self-sustainable tank, but it does handle solo interrupts really well. Not that bad, so I would say 2.5 out of 5. Yeah, prop alley's hurting, damn. I wonder what the totals Utility. are gonna be at the end. Utility is the least okay. important category for high-level content, but I find it to be more valuable for pug content. This all includes Which battle res, CC, group healing, or group cooldowns. Bear tank has amazing utility, especially this season. Poison and curse dispel is abundant, so this class has the best dispels. Soothing rage is also big in a couple of dungeons. The druid CCs are very useful in general, particularly Ursul's and Typhoon. Battle res is also big for pugs. I'm giving bear a four out of five. Eh, nice. Death Knight utility is generally on the weaker side, but in some oh, of these dungeons, Death Grip is actually super useful. Anti-Magic yeah. Zone is a solid group go down. Let us play often. waste to this realm. <laughs> Lugta next. Thank you for the follow, man. Welcome to our scourge. Daily damage happens. Battle Res is also big for pugs. I'm giving Blood Decay a 3.2 out of 5. Yeah, fine. Whatever. War utility can be situationally good. The biggest niche utility warrior brings is Intervene. There are actually a lot of little mechanics warriors can intervene if you understand the encounters well enough. One of the biggest examples is Necrotic Wake first boss. You can completely negate the Heaving Wretch mechanic that usually one-shots a DPS or healer. Aside from rallying, okay. cry, sucking, warriors bring a lot of CC. So I'm giving warriors a 3.5 out of 5. Yeah, no b -res. Demon Hunter has a lot less utility than before. Sigils like San Sigil Damn, were here he goes again. It's shitting on Demon Hunter. Every single category. Best Jesus. Utility in plus. But after the heavy My nerf God, and Demon stops Hunter's being generally shit. worse in Season 1, I don't think Demon Hunter utility is particularly useful. Darkness is still insanely good. This might be a surprise, but I'm giving VDH a 3.5 out of 5. Monk utility is solid, but nothing special. It provides mostly the same CC as the okay. tanks, if not less. And Poison Dispel is the only really useful part of Detox. Probably the least impactful utility. 2.5 out of 5. Ooh. Paladin utility is your strongest point. Avenger shield interrupts are king once again, and party defensives like Blessing of Sacrifice, yeah, they got good shit. I'm not gonna lie. and even Freedom are all very big in dungeons. Yeah, they Battle got Red is also big for pugs. Even Leona Hands can quickly save someone. 4.5 out of 5. Yeah, I agree with that. Paladins do have a lot of utility. Difficulty. We'll be looking at how hard the tanks are to play based on the rotational complexity. Okay, guys, if he says Blood DK is one of the harder ones to play, I'm going to tell chat right now to, to, you know, eat their own shit. Because you guys are always crapping on me that I only play Blood DK because it's easy. 
We're about to find out from, from my alt friend Dorky here. How easy are they? Let's Let's find out. Resource management and encounter knowledge required. Let's this find one out. can be hard to score because the of the difference we'll see. between difficulty in learning and difficulty we'll in see. excelling. I'll be using Bunch two different scores chat. for this. One for the skill floor, which okay. is how hard it is to pick up and learn. And one okay. for skill ceiling, which is how hard it is to master. The higher okay. the score, the higher the difficulty. All right. Bears are amongst the easiest to pick up and perform well with. I agree. You are mostly mashing the same three buttons rotationally. Defensively, bears have an abundant amount of cooldowns that are simple to understand. Grouping okay. mobs and getting pulls going is also very simple. Encounter knowledge is also not as important for bears since you deal with almost every scenario the same. Floor score is 1 out of 5. Ceiling score is also 1 out of 5. Okay. EKs are fairly... Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm not, before he says anything, I'm going to tell you what I think real quick. One second. Blood DK floor, uh, high, uh, floor medium, medium floor. Okay, it's 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 not. I guess you can just death strike your way to surviving through things. So medium floor, but high ceiling, right? It takes a lot to be really good at a blood DK. Okay, that's what I'm gonna say. Because if you're really good at a blood DK, you can survive anything. If you're just mediocre, you might die. All right, here, let's see what he says. Okay punishing and scary to start out with no, I don't but once it's figured out it can be kind of easy you have to get used to taking in large amounts of damage and currently dk's have a bloated amount of buttons the resource management That's dk right, has to deal with also takes some getting used to getting yeah. past this point the class doesn't have a ton of min maxing encounter knowledge also isn't as important for dk since you will deal with almost every scenario the same where you're just death striking or pressing yeah. one of your many defensives it all comes True. down to knowing your limits before having to death strike and understanding the knowing your limits and knowing the fights you got to know the fights as a blood dk you got to know when to anti magic shield you got to know when to damage mitigate you got to know when to really pop off on self-healing right because you're not a warrior you're not just going to take dick slap to the face and be able to survive it without reacting to it in some way multiple amounts of resources you have floor score is four or five okay Ceiling score is 2.5 so what's he saying he's saying it's not easy to pick up okay he's saying it's easy to be good at it but it's not easy to get started with it okay I don't get it. Why, why everyone bitching me out saying I play the easiest damn class? I clearly don't. Remember what? Okay, what? I'm, that's what I'm saying, though. Sam doesn't know his limits. I, I guess no. I guess not. Yeah, Sam AMS on physical damage. Okay, sometimes I make mistakes. What do you want from me? Okay, but this right here, four and a half. Let's see if anyone's harder. Let's see if any tanking class is harder than fucking Blood DK to pick up. Not a Find out. Warriors are very simple to pick up and are haters. similar to bears where you mostly mash the same three buttons. However, unlike bears, there are a lot more complexities outside of rotation. You have to be actively facing the mobs, understanding the encounters well, and somewhat manage your resources between ignore pains and revenges. Warriors, Warriors need easy to, to pick actively up. know what to reflect, spell block, and what mechanics need big defensives. Overall, it's still an easier tank to perform well with. Floor score is <laughs> 1.6 out of 5. Fucking child's play. It's like training wheels playing a warrior compared to a bud decay. Ceiling score is 2.7 out of 5. Demon Hunters have the least amount of buttons out of any class, but there are a lot of interactions between these few buttons. I've found Demon Hunter to be one of the easier tanks to pick yeah, up, Demon when Hunter it comes to easy. mastering the spec and doing well in harder content, Demon Hunter can be very tricky. DH also has an awkward time grouping mobs, grabbing aggro. The way I say that, I've never played Demon Hunter in my life, but it's easy. Oh, and getting started. There are a Just lot a of hater. passive mechanics that Demon Hunter has to understand defensively, such as Painbringer, Soul Crush, I saw Achilles here a second bites, ago. Maybe he can and Illuminated them. Sigils. DH is also one of the few tanks that really need to understand how to deal with defensive or mitigation downtime. There will be moments where you have to space out your defensives perfectly or learn how to kite properly. It's a very easy to pick up, but hard Kiting's to match for tank. Floor score is 2 out of 5. Ceiling score is 4 out of 5. Okay, okay. Monk is always seen as the hardest tank to play for multiple reasons. It has the most amount of buns rotationally, and it has to be used sequentially rather than mm. mindless spam. Monk also has the hardest to understand Monk, mitigation and hardest. resource system. It can be very overwhelming with how much fear is going on when playing Monk. It has a combination of hard rotational complexity, resource management, and encounter knowledge required. Doing good damage also requires good use of blackout combo, which furthers the rotational complexity. This is the hardest tank. Floor score is 4.2 out yeah. of 5. Ceiling score is four. not that much higher than than blood d blood you know i'm just saying blood dk is kind of close but i will agree with this you know i'll take i'll take it and i'll eat it that i agree monks are probably the hardest tank to play prot paladin is not going to be harder out of five 
Paladin is fairly simple to pick up, quite similar to Warrior with a bit more involved. However, Paladin does require a lot more skill to function properly. You can't spam or use Word of Glory rotationally, and the rotational priority is a bit more complicated. Having to sit and consecrate and playing around it adds to the difficulty. Paladin is still a fairly simple class to pick up. The biggest difficulty yeah, comes from maximizing throw your Avenger utility. Shield around. Knowing how to use Avenger Shield interrupts properly, when to use your blessings. You don't use it properly. All these Paladins just fucking throw that shit around on pull. They don't well, that shit. takes a lot of skill in a hectic scenario. The other difficulty is knowing how to rotate your defensives well, because paladins are reliant on their defensives. They I'll do have an shit. abundant amount of defensives you have to rotate through. Floor score is two out of five. Oh wow, look at that fucking training wheels for kids on that on that prod paladin. Okay, so looking at these, obviously, if you're if you're a player coming in and you got no skill, do not touch blood DK or monk. It's very it's very simple, okay? But then everyone coming in here talking about how I'm shit at the game when I'm playing one of the hardest floor tanks in the game, right? You have to have some skill to pick up a four out of five, according to Dorky, okay? Guys all bitching, man. All talking shit every day. I've created a shit ball of chat. That's it. That's, that's what I created here. All the uh, degenerates all unite in the morning, come in here. Fucking like 80 plus of you in here right now just talking shit nonstop. This is what I've created. This is my community. Bunch of shit talkers. When the, 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 clearly the man, Dorky, knows what he's talking about. This guy's very skilled at the game. He's sitting here telling you, Sam got skill. Sam got skill. If ceiling score is 3.5 out of 5. Fun. This will be my personal enjoyment on each spec and what I think are the most fun parts about each of these specs. Bear tanks have always What's your chart say, Cadence? You're about to literally have a fucking uh, aneurysm over... Okay, what is this? Skill required. A DK... And, what, why'd you... This looks like fucking some weird... Okay, it looks like you just drew dicks on a chart. Okay. Yeah, DK. Okay, so Sam, you're saying is here. Well, is that what he said? Is that what he said? Is that what his ranking, according to his rankings? Uh, Yeah, okay, that is what he said. All right, fair. Okay, fine. Fine. Bear tanks have always been you either love it or hate it. They can be boring for a lot of players, but I've found it to be really chill and enjoyable when I'm in the mood for something more laid back. Bears also let you engage with the dungeon and mechanics more and focus makes a sense. little bit less on your character performance. This has been a large part of what makes tanking fun for me. Leading the group and playing the dungeon rather than the class, I'll give it a neutral 2.5 out of 5. DK can be a roller coaster or a snooze. When the encounter is intense, DK gets your blood pumping like no other. But when there's nothing happening, DK can be kind of boring and tiresome rotationally. You're either just spinning multiple plates, trying to keep your resources up and not dropping your buffs, or you're struggling to survive massive yeah, amounts of damage. Is. Personally, I don't like this version of DK as much as the older versions, but it is still blood DK. DK is fun. Let us lay waste to this realm. Hertheus, uh, thank you for the uh, sub on YouTube. I appreciate that. Welcome to our Scourge. I've always felt like Blood DK is pretty fun. I've played other classes in the game before. Never tanked with another tank, but I've played Frost DK. I've played Mage, uh, both Frost and Arcane. I've played Hunter, uh, Marksmanship. It's uh, I've played other classes throughout my 20 years of playing World of Warcraft. But I have to say, the most fun I've ever had is Blood DK. I just enjoy the fantasy a lot. I fell in love with it when I first started playing it back in uh, BFA, and I haven't stopped since. It's just a lot of fun. I enjoy Giving it. this a 3.5 out of 5. Warriors Same have been an specs, absolute basically, blast basically. to play this season. I also played Rogue during Cataclysm, too. Probably my most enjoyed tank currently because of how Never spammy healed. and how often you have cooldowns do available. Shit. Normally, I enjoy Warrior a lot and then I get bored of it real quick, but this time I've been enjoying it for a bit longer. The whole gameplay of Thunderclap Leap, Weaving, and spamming Shield Slams can be really satisfying. I'll give it a 4.5 out of yeah. 5. Yeah, everybody says Mountain Thane's a lot of fun, so this makes sense. Demon Hunter has been one of my most enjoyed tanks these days. Even though I've played it so much during Dragonflight, I still enjoy it for its complexity and how it plays in the hardest level content. What sure. no other class can capture is the mobility and fun in buttons like Vengeful Retreat and Fellblade. I'll give this a 4 out of 5. Ooh. Okay. Monk has always been a treat for me to play. I've always enjoyed Monk because of how similar it can feel to Blood DK. Dorky really likes Monk. Blood pumping, and when you take That's crazy amounts getting. of damage and stagger goes really high, it is super exciting. Monk rotation can also be really enjoyable compared to the usual spam buttons on tanks, but it does get exhausting at times when I'm not feeling an active spec and I want something a little bit more laid back. I'll give this a 4.2 out of 5. 
I haven't enjoyed Paladins as much as before, and it's partially because of how spoiled I am by how good they felt in Dragonflight Season 1 when I mained it. Yeah. Paladin has always felt like the most fun when I could burst for an insane amount of damage with Wings plus Divine Toll, but right now it just doesn't hit that hard. It can still be fun to play here and there, and I do enjoy how the base of Paladin feels, but with the lower Wings up time and the hero talent... Mm -hmm. Paladin's what you play before you hit puberty, and then Blood Decay is what you play after. Yep. Trees not being anything transformative. This is probably my least yep, enjoyed tank it. currently. Two out of five. Two out of five, Jesus. And now for Just the overall rank ranking. This one will be what I personally rank the tanks from the best to worst for organized high keys. These will be very specific to comps that are played in the top level teams. Currently, I think the top three teams are That's all so extremely good, yeah. just depending on the situation, and I'll have a really hard time ranking these. But okay, for number see. one, it will be Protection Warrior. Warrior has just felt the strongest overall in my I'll experience. I'll take it. This was a tough choice because yeah. I don't think it'll be the best in every scenario. A lot of people have been enjoying Warrior a lot. Uh, that, that makes sense. By the way, you got to put a number, Savage, after exclamation point enter. Based on how many points you have, you can put the number after. Space. Just right now, there you are some very highly tuned attack power specs that benefit massively from Battle Shell. I haven't found any real struggles with Warrior, and honestly, as a standalone tank, Warrior is probably the best. Number two will be Guardian Druid. While bears are on oh, the shit, leader where's side he putting of gaming, DK? they are the most solid all-around defensive tank and will be the best Mark of the Wild bearer. With a defensive build... Didn't he, didn't he just spend half this video shitting on druids? Did he put him at number two? Bears also don't struggle in any defensive scenarios, but it does come at the cost of lower damage. Right now, this I would say keys, bears though. the safest choice Maybe will do different. well regardless of what is top three. Number three will be Vengeance Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter damage has been nerfed a bit, and the class is a bit squishy. I don't like where this is going. At the highest keys, but will require so much more work to survive. It's also very reliant on the caster comp of Mage oh, and shit. Og being good. And I'm not currently sold on Og. After having played a lot of beta keys at 626 item level, the timers do feel tight, and Og has been detrimental to damage. This will probably be covered in an entirely different video, but I'm not entirely sure well, it's about gotta be at least four. and Demon Hunter could very well be the best tank or the third best tank, depending on if the caster comp is meta or not. Mm. Number four will be Blood Decay. Okay. DKs are looking to be strong for the first time in a while for high keys. Yeah, that's we right. can live completely fine, just a bit lacking on damage or raid buff or utility. It's always Number our damage. It's always our damage. Everyone always complaining about our damage, and really we had good damage when we had the, um, the gavel. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had the gavel back in uh, Shadowlands. That was like one of the few times that we actually popped off on damage. So, I mean, if you're gonna shit on us for damage, I guess. For five will be Brewmaster Monk. This one was tough between four and five because Monk actually brings really Damn, damage. Damn, prop paladin. Ultimately decided on DK for four because of how much more healing and health Monk requires. DK will allow your group to do more damage than having a Monk. And lastly, number six will be Paladin. Unfortunately, Paladins are looking to be the weakest tank for Ouch. the highest keys. However, the difference really isn't that big. Now for what I think is the ranking for the best tank in oh, for the Okay, so, so okay, got it. That was MDI. Now it's for pugging, which is what we typically do on this stream. I just pull fucking five, four or five degenerates Basically, out of chat. Not and taking any comms Let's see how this into is. account or the reliance on good comms and group play. Number one will be Blood Decay. From my beta experience, Blood Decay feels Damn. the best. When this is why I call myself a man of the people. Look at that. Look at that. I'm a man of the people. I play Blood Decay so I can pug shit. Look at that. Glorious. Just playing with random comps and not Glorious. having any good group play. You can do a lot by yourself, and Battle Res does come in clutch. Number two will be Guardian Druid. Bear is Guardian? super safe okay. and reliable, and provides a lot for a group with its utility. Mark of the Wild is also just a raid buff that works well in any group without a druid. Number three will be Prot Warrior. Warrior is super solid all around still. It doesn't require much healing, does great damage, and it's just a strong standalone okay. tank. Middle. Number four will Mid. be Protection Paladin. Paladin, as bad as it is for the highest keys, is actually really good for pug keys. This class can solo carry interrupts, save a lot of noobs. Number five will be Vengeance Demon Hunter. Each can feel a bit weak defensively, but when played really well, it can still live and you can absolutely carry the damage okay. if damage is lacking. Its Vengeance, strong point Brewman. will be Prem This is kind of, re it's almost reversed. I mean, Brewmaster was at near the, Vengeance and Brew sounds like they're a five and six on both lists, but the others, the top four, they're kind of flipped over. That's interesting in terms of pugging. And I don't call myself a man of the people. I, I didn't give myself that title. That title was given to me by the people. 
That's right. Yeah. Have a Merrily mate. doing big damage. Number six will I'll be Blue Master Monk. Monk definitely feels the worst in Pug scenarios, but it is similar to Demon Hunter where if played well, you can absolutely carry groups by doing high damage. However, Monk just doesn't provide a lot for a group and can be squishy in Pug scenarios. One last thing I want to mention is there will be a lot of tuning happening still. We've got a week before the expansion comes out, and there is probably going to be tuning with Heroic Week this time. M Plus doesn't come out for an entire month after the game is out. So we're looking at a lot of potential changes. For all we know, they might just buff the hell That's out true. of Paladin. Let's check it. Change. I hope this helps a lot with your decision making when it comes to choosing your main for Warfin. I know there's a lot of decision paralysis going on in the WoW community at the moment with the expansion coming out. I'm and I really want to play this out as quickly as possible. If you still can't decide after this, here's a quick recommendation from me. Play Pro Warrior or Blood Decay, they own. If you want something a bit more laid That's back, right. maybe play Bear. If you want something more exciting, maybe play Monk or DH. If you want to do everything by yourself, play Paladin. Anyways, that is it for the video. If you haven't already, please give this video a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. That was a great video. That was a great video from a great man. Dorky knows me. I'm known as Dorky's alt because I'm just that skilled at the game of Blood DK. I play, I'm one of the best Blood DKs ever. And um, I'm called the man of the people because I serve the people. I come here every day and I run the keys with the boys and run the raids with the boys. And you guys are asking, who are the people? It's the people, damn it. It's no single person. It's multiple people. That's why I've gotten that name. And I'll continue to surf throughout the war within and do what I gotta do. Blood DKs have a saying, and DKs in general have a saying. We do what the living cannot. And that is what I do every day here on this stream.